And then, I pulled out my sword and sliced off its arm. The squid monster was raged and almost got me with a powerful blow that smashed the ship's floor less than three inches away from me. And I jumped up to my feet, preparing for the next attack. Wow, Joyfus. This seems like an awesome time and a thrilling adventure. So where is your problem? You see, Joseph, this is my problem. I was not thrilled by what was going on at all. It had used to be awesome, but it wasn't anymore. Let me start by asking you this. What made you love the sea in the first place? Brushman Thronehood? Well, that's not exactly what I meant. What made you think that what Thronewood was doing was exceptionally awesome? New experiences, discovery of new places, and new things. Exactly. Fighting a giant squid would feel like the most awesome thing in the world when you do it the first time. When you keep fighting giant squids through five years on a daily basis, it, it just becomes boring. In fact, you'd likely even prefer peeling potatoes to that exercise. Not peeling potatoes, definitely. <laughs> right. Anyways, what you really need now is to take rest from your adventures for a while and indulge into a totally different experience. Keep doing that for a short while and your love for the sea adventures will be brand new in no time. Trust me. Hmm. You think? <laughs> Oh, it's my ship calling me for my next adventure. I gotta go. See you later, my friend. <sighs> that adventurous boy. I knew I wouldn't convince him. That sharp old fellow. I knew he would convince me. If only he knew how blasé I am about sea adventures now. Believe it or not, this time it almost felt like peeling potatoes. Three months after our last meeting, I knew it was about time I listened to Joseph's advice and immersed myself into new activities different from touring the seas. Finally! The musty smell of my town's canteen, after a long period of absence. Why is the place so quiet like this? Have you heard of the incident at James's farm? What happened? James woke up this morning only to find that all of his cows' tails were gone. Good Lord! And who's done that? The culprit is yet to be discovered. The cows are lucky to belong to a breed that regrow their tails. But poor James has now lost the season's harvest and will have to wait for a little while before his cows regrow their tails back again. Well, well, look who's here. Ah, Simon, so you're back. Back since a fortnight? What kept you so long? Don't tell me you lost your way in the sea again. Sorry to disappoint you, but nothing like that happened. We were simply enjoying the sail. Come on now, sea lover. Don't make it sound like you're so desperate to set sail again. What? I have no idea what you're talking about. You don't? Sorry, Joyfus, but I don't think so. I already had a quick conversation with the captain of your ship a moment ago, and it didn't seem like he was expecting you on his ship the next time he sails, which must be happening pretty soon. You never missed a chance to roam the seas before. What's going on, Joyfus? Do you think it's very important for you to know? Besides, being here for two weeks in a row, it's pretty clear that you missed your ship as well. Huh, <laughs> you're smarter than you look, aren't you? You're right, I think I've had enough sailing lately, so I decided to take some time off for now. So, I guess we'll be seeing a lot of each other's faces whether we like it or not. Until then, ciao. Why should I take William's collection? What am I supposed to do with it? This is the only frame that doesn't have any picture in it. I wonder why. Seems like an announcement for an important event. Here's another ad that fell from the ad board. 
It seems like a piece from a newspaper. I'll keep it. It says the grand cooking contest hosted by Chef Martin. Location, Kanta Island. Date, July 5th. Oh, here's something to immerse myself into as Joseph advised, but the deadline is tight. I only have until the end of today to prepare my stuff and set off to Kanta Island if I'm to catch the contest in time. What survives from this side is a natural predicted event. It says that we're going to have a full sun eclipse on... Wait, isn't that today's date? It says that the eclipse is going to happen today at 4.17 p.m. Cool! Hello, William. Hey. So, what have you got for me today? We have your favorite food on today's menu, fish and shrimp meal. Very funny. Why, it is funny. You're a man that spends most of his life on the seas, and you still can't eat seafood. Good for you ships nowadays carry loads of potatoes, or else we might see you helping James and his farm instead of roaming the seas. What happened? Where is everybody? This place used to look like a bee's nest, but now it's freaking dead. What's the matter? Ah, I almost forgot you'd been absent for quite a while now. It all started when Chef Martin, the former cook of this restaurant... You know Chef Martin, don't you? Well? Okay, I guess it's quite obvious that you absolutely have no clue. You should have known that it was Martin who kept these people coming to this island all that time. Ah, you see, here's the thing. Martin's not here anymore. He relocated to Kanta Island nearly two months ago. He says he can't be away any longer from what has become the new center of kitchen art. And with him, did our former visitors and tourists also shift their interests to Kanta away from our town? Exactly. I'm pretty sure we'll all be seeing many familiar faces leaving this place for good now that it has lost its value. Even I'm thinking about finding a better job on another island. Say, William, having worked with Chef Martin in the same kitchen for quite a while, you must have learned some of his best recipes, right? And you expect me to give that to you simply because it's your request, huh? I don't think you fully understand the real value of Martin's secrets yet. It's true that Martin often gives lectures on cooking, but that only applies to recipes that are already commonly known. He never divulges secrets of original recipes developed by him. I myself was never made privy to any of his secrets. The best I got from him was how to cook according to a dozen of common recipes and a copy of the Cooking Encyclopedia. Wait, did you just say Cooking Encyclopedia? Yep, signed by Chef Martin himself. I hope you wouldn't mind if I borrow it for some time. Well, geez, what's all the sudden interest in a cooking book? Just a way to kill time while I'm bored until the next giant squid attack. Nah, not a chance, Joyfest. Okay, here it is, William. I'm applying for the cooking contest. Are you now? The one to be held in Kanta Island? Ha, ah, that's a good one. I almost believed you. Nah, not a chance, Joyfest. Why does one of your picture frames not have a picture in it? I'm keeping it for the concept art picture from the booth. Did you see the games booth to your left when you leave the restaurant? That's where I found it. It's a stunning concept art picture for the mighty tentacle master from the day of the octopus. To get it, the owner offered me a challenge. The challenge was build me a pyramid of cards and the picture is yours, he said, but I could never make it. Every time I'm thinking I'm just about to finish and win, the cards suddenly collapse. And I have no idea how that happens. Seems like an easy challenge to me. Well, if that's the case, why don't you go and try for yourself? I bet I will make it from the first time. Oh, really? And what if I do and bring you the picture? In that case, you get whatever you ask for. 
Let it be the cooking encyclopedia. I see we're playing dirty, huh, Joy Fest? Fine, bring me that picture and the book is yours. For a little while, at least. Consider it done. I've just checked the newspaper clip on the clipboard and I saw Martin almost falling off his balloon while trying to reach for a scroll. What could be in that scroll that was worth risking a life for? You're probably the last in this town to see the moment, whether in the newspaper clip or in real time. The whole island talked about it for a week, as you would expect, though. All speculation had one thing in common. They assumed that what was in the scroll must have been one of his recipes. And that only seems to be right. I now have reason to believe that before leaving our island, Martin spent some time developing what he considers to be the finest recipe by far. His luck wasn't all that bad, though, because guess where his scrolls landed? Among all the places on our island, it chose to land on no other than the jungles that cover the passive volcano where the Indian hunters live. Well, recently I've heard rumors that somehow it was found by the native Indians. I don't know whether or not that's true, but I wouldn't want to personally venture into their land unless I really have to. The scroll is either there inside their village and impossible to capture, or not, and impossible to be found. In either case, it doesn't look like a promising business to me. What is it with the robbery at James's farm people are talking about? James woke up this morning to find his cow's tails were all gone. Somebody stole them, of course. The cow's tails will regrow back in the near future, but poor James has lost his season's harvest. You know, if something like this happened two or more months ago, we'd accuse the foreigner of doing it. But since no strangers are coming around to this island anymore, the thief has to be one of us. What is it with the robbery at James's farm people are talking about? James woke up this morning to find his cow's tails were all gone. Somebody, you know, if some... Isn't it strange that no one yet has attempted to find Chef Martin's lost secret recipe? Ah, you can't just simply walk into their sacred village and expect them to welcome you. As far as I know, and this is what I hear from my customers, the real key to having access to the native's village is their impossible to pass test of truth you know what i'm talking about that kind of test which is believed to be witnessed and influenced by the gods so when you pass the test it means that the gods have helped you it means that they really trust you but all my customers describe the test as much too difficult that they've never seen anyone pass it before I really wish to, but last time I did, he told me that jokes cease to be funny if heard more than nine times. That's it for now. All right. I think Mr. Joseph told me to stay away from adventures for a while. This is a folding knife that could help me cut the recipe's vegetables, so I will surely take it. Not interested. I've got no reason to take it. A small yellow note with some handwriting on it. William's collection of concept art pictures. The steel rod looks rusty. It might work again if I find a way to minimize friction. Ugh, it won't budge. <laughs> Hello, William. Hey. What is it with that cart blocking the kitchen door? That damn rusty thing. That Steve, our cart boy, left it in an awkward position before the heavy rains last month. Now he says it's too rusty for him to move it. 
I didn't believe him at first, but this morning, I tried with everything in me, and it didn't move an inch. I think I can help, but maybe you can help me as well. So, what's your game now, Joyfess? Simple. I fix the cart, you let me take the salt and pepper. You never give up, do you? Fine, I tell you what, you fix that ugly cart for me, and I won't be standing in your way. Nice drawings! What are they about? Uh, what, Joyfest? You don't mean to tell me you already forgot my fine collection of concept art already. These pictures mark the beginning of history. Just imagine that the greatest adventure games of all time started from these drawings you see. Games like Day of the Octopus, Lunatic College, The Royal Quest, Monkey's Bay, and that's just a few along with so many other great games. That's it for now. All right. Hey. Hey, lad. How can I help you? I'm looking for the captain of the ship. You're talking to him. What do you need? I need to go to Kanta Island. Chief Martin's cooking festival, eh, lad? Wait, how did you know? Pack your stuff, lad. Our trip is the day after tomorrow. The day after tomorrow? But that's too late. I need to be there by tomorrow morning at most. The festival begins two days from now. No one is interested in being there before that. Why would you need to be leaving so early anyway? I'm applying for the cooking contest. I got to be there before the festival begins. I see. But I can't move the ship two days earlier because of one man's request. But Captain... Sorry lad, the date is set. Since you can't take me to Kanta Island, perhaps you could help me find another way at least. I'm afraid you're wasting your time there because there is only one ship that moves from this island to Kanta Island. And that's my ship. I'm buying your ship. Ah, nice one. My ship ain't for sale. But since you're that desperate, I can consider selling you all the available spaces. You mean that I buy all the ship's seats? Exactly. I've got the small fortune of silver coins. Let's hear your price and finish this. You said silver? Ha ha ha. It's never easy to make a journey off the schedule, you know. You have no idea about the losses I'm going to bear for not serving my other destinations over the next two days. Can we just bypass Rhetorix and get to your point? Easy, lad. Although it'll be extremely difficult for me to depart today, I will do it for you for a very reasonable price. Only four golden pounds. Four golden pounds? But that's too much. Listen, lad, you want to go to Cantor Island so badly, and I'm giving you that by moving my ship a very long way for only one person. All I'm doing is asking for something very nominal in return. You don't expect me to take you for free, do you? I hope you're aware how much this competition means to me. You will do me a great favor by helping me get there in time. Very moving, lad. I can't wait to have you on me ship. Once you've brought me those golden pounds. I'm gonna move on. Later, mate. The hammer might be useful. I never thought this old lifeboat could be fixed anyway. What a waste of Spanish olive oil! The dropper is filled now.
The wheels are oiled now. I should go and inform William. Hello, William. Hey. I have good news for you, William. The cart is movable now. Perfect. Look, you can go over to the table and pick whatever you want. I'll act like I'm not looking. That's the spirit. I've got no business in there. I've got more important things to do than eating. Let's hope nobody will notice the missing stuff. Salt and pepper. A thick and good quality towel. Weird name. I should probably look it up. It's castor oil. The worst tasting and smelling oil on earth. A Spanish product. Nice! Starch. Wow! Is that a carnival booth? That's right. You put one coin on the table. If you lose the game, I keep the coin to myself. If you win, you take it back with a prize of your choice from among the booth stock. How do I win the game? I mean, what are the game's rules? It's simple. All you gotta do is build with the cards a pyramid matching the one you see in the image within 30 seconds. If you do it within the given time frame and your pyramid stands erect for at least 5 seconds, you win the game. Otherwise, you lose. That looks fairly easy. I bet that players often successfully make it. Um, I believe most players actually do succeed in this, don't they? Some of them do. Others don't. Yes, yes, of course. But my point is, well, how many of them actually do win the game? It depends. It differs according to prevailing circumstances and factors. Factors? What factors? What the heck are you talking about? Many of them. They're numerous and overlapping. Some of them have to do with the player himself, others with external factors in his environment. Did you notice, as I do, that after all that, I didn't get a single useful piece of information? I know. I'm doing a good job. Okay, let's play the game. There you go. Time for my prize. What is it? What's happening? Hey! How could that have happened? It was steady just a second ago. Seems you weren't lucky enough. This isn't right. The cards were so steady, I assure you. Something went wrong. Hey, sorry, my friend. Rules are rules. Rules, you say? We'll see about that. I'm sure there's more to know before I hurt my fingers for no reason. 
Why would a nail be sticking out in that weird place? It's so glazed that it reflects its surroundings. Wait, what's this that is reflected on its surface? Is that a magnet over there? I wonder why the operator would hang a magnet in there. I simply can't take it. If he notices what I did, he will refuse to play against me next time. Hey there! Welcome to my booth, friend. Okay, let's play the game. There you go. Time for my prize. What is it? What's happening? Hey! How could that have happened? It was steady just a second ago. Seems you weren't lucky enough. This isn't right. The cards were so steady, I assure you. Something went wrong. Hey, sorry, my friend. Rules are rules. Rules, you say? We'll see about that. Hello, James. Yeah? I'm really sorry about what happened to your cows. Everybody's sorry, but will this return my stolen cow tails? A whole year's harvest was lost overnight. And not only that, did you hear what they say? The culprit is for certain one of the townspeople. How could that be any worse? How's the farm business going? Not as it used to be. Not since Chef Martin left this island. You don't think he's coming back, do you? Only time will tell. But he didn't look like someone intending to come back, did he? He was actually quite explicit about his intention to the contrary. So I'm afraid I can't fill you with false hopes. That's what I thought. No, he's not coming back. And the good times will never be back again. It's just this dead place from now on. I'll be moving on. Sure. I don't really believe that old lady's thing about horseshoes bringing good luck. But then, well, who knows? Done. I've taken the usable part of the old fishing net. Let's see what we're gonna get when we dip the horseshoe into the red paint. Look at that. It looks like a magnet. Let's see how you will manage with a fake magnet. Hey there. Welcome to my booth, friend. Okay, let's play the game. Huh? What's the problem, Boothmaster? Seems something isn't working. How did you? None of us did anything, right, sir? 
I simply won the game, and you will have to give me my prize for that. Fine. You win that cute teddy bear from my collection. I don't want your teddy. Okay, what exactly do you want? The concept art picture. But that one is original. Sorry, rules are rules, isn't it? <laughs> Fine. Take your picture. There you have it, your precious Day of the Octopus concept art picture. Wow, I can't believe you actually did it. What exactly did you do to win that game? I painted a horseshoe and actually it's a pretty long story. I see, anyway, here's what you were promised. Please take care of it. Now I can exactly know the particulars of every content of the recipe, amazing. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. According to a warning note here, it claims that mixing castor oil with Roger's blend, which is a popular chicken sauce, will produce a hypnotic blend that will induce sleep into the subject for a few hours. Let's see. Hmm. Interesting. According to a warning note here, it claims that mixing castor oil with Roger's blend, which is a popular chicken sauce, Let's see. Although there is an article about that, I can see nothing of interest. I've heard of a cooking competition that's going to be held in Kanta Island very soon, and I'm leaving this evening. It's good to see that you have found new things to keep yourself busy. Have you ever been to Kanta Island before? I've always wanted to see it, but it was never on our sailing path. Then here's your chance to see it. Kanta is such a magnificent place with a myriad of unique attractions. In its cool mountains, you will enjoy the scene of the tea plantations. Oh, and its beaches are the best in the region. And you'll never get tired of walking in its busy bazaars at night with all the glowing red lights around. And after all, it wasn't called the Red Glow for no reason. I see this place has changed a bit since I last left it. More than a bit. We should have seen it coming, though. The island derived its significance from one person, and that was in no way sustainable. It was only a matter of time until that advantage was lost, and, well, indeed it was. I feel bad about your business. Any plans about moving? Nah. New beginnings aren't meant for people of my age. Besides, how do we know that Martin's going away was a bad thing? It's too early to judge. I guess that's about it for now. You take care, my friend. Halt! Where are you going, pale face? I want to see your chief. A pirate in the land of Sons of the Sun. Interesting. Nice to meet you too, chief. Except that I'm a sailor, not a pirate. So, you're not a pirate. And how does a sailor spend his time? Well, true, I roam the seas in a ship, but... See? That's exactly what pirates do. Yes, of course, but... I think we've heard enough, Paleface. So, what brings the Paleface to the land of Sons of the Sun? 
cultural fascination. Isn't it a big waste of your great culture not to be known by many when the entire world has got to enjoy its overwhelming beauty? I must take time to explore the wonders of your superior culture and reveal them to the whole world. Very true, and well said. Seems pale faces are smarter than I thought after all. Yet we cannot reveal to anyone the secrets of our great culture until they have passed the God's test of truth. And how does the test go? You will shoot an arrow at a very distant target board that even the most experienced of archers can't normally hit. Only those who are trusted by the Great Ones will receive their assistance to be able to hit the board. If the gods trust you, your arrow will successfully hit the target, and you will gain our trust. If the gods don't, your arrow will fail, and we won't allow you to wander around. The Pale Face should come to us, and let us know when he feels he's ready to take the test. I'm here to dance with you. We stopped dancing a while ago. And why's that, Chief? Because I lost my great staff of rain during one of our hunting trips. That's horrible news! I really wanted to dance. If you really want to, then you'd better find my lost staff. I'm ready for the test of truth. Very well. Guards, take the Pale Face to the archery yard. Go on, Pale Face, and prove to us that the Great Ones trust you. It now even seems further than ever. It now even seems further than ever. My goodness, that's just insane. These people know too well that their test is impossible to pass without a miracle. No arrow in the board, no trust given by the Great Ones, and hence no entry to our sacred village granted to the Pale Face. What makes you so sure the Goddess of the Sun exists at all? It's pretty simple. That's what I was told before reaching six years of age. What if I were your parent and told you otherwise? You're not, and you didn't tell me otherwise before becoming age six. Therefore, the Goddess of the Sun is the absolute unquestionable truth. You told me you stopped dancing. Why? Because I... Lost my great staff of ranger. Where were you hunting when you lost the staff, Chief? In the western mountain jungles above the caves. Why would you take your staff as far as the western jungles in the first place? I never part from my staff. Never? Even when you sleep? Nope. Neither when I pee or eat. So what have you got for me when I come back with your lost staff? We will summon the Great Rain Dance and reveal the precious gift promised to the Staff Finder. Wow! I've never considered the possibility of summoning a dance to honor a Pale Face! To honor the Staff, Pale Face. What's the promised gift? The Great Golden Fortune Statue. Wait! Did you say golden? Correct. Golden. No one was ever disappointed with the statue. Come again. How do I do the test of truth? You will shoot an arrow at a very distant target board that even the most experienced of our- If the gods trust you, if the gods don't, the pale face- I'll be back later. Sure. The wood material of the target board looks surprisingly soft and easy to cut through with a blade. There. 
These holes will allow me to attach something to the board. A magnetic target board. Can't wait to see the fun. Halt! Where are you going, pale face? I want to see your chief. I'm ready for the test of truth. Very well. Guards, take the pale face to the archery yard. Go on, pale face, and prove to us that the great ones trust you. My goodness, that's just insane. These people know too well that their test is impossible to pass without a miracle. No arrow in the board, no trust given by the Great Ones, and hence no entry to our sacred village granted to the Pale Face. I'll be back later. Sure. Do you know anyone around that could teach me how to become a good archer? Oh, sure. The Indian hunters. No one aims like them. <coughs> Let's keep natives aside for now. Anyone other than natives? Well, I'm afraid not. How much time do you have to master archery? Until tonight. My, my. In such a time period, your chances of being able to create a homing arrow would be far better. Hmm, a homing arrow. Why not? Looks like a fantastic idea. I guess that's about it for now. You take care, my friend. Simon, is that really you? I didn't know you read books. Ah, of course I don't. But I bet it's your first time here, too. I admit that I'm very curious about your business here, but I'm afraid I don't have time for chit-chat. Now, if you excuse me... Hey, Christina. Oh, hey, Joyfus. How can I help you? Nice deer head. I'm afraid it's actually a moose, not a deer. Although they both belong to the same family. Cervidae, or deer. Oh, sorry, Joyfus. How rude of me. Who cares whether it's a deer or a fish or whatever it is? Oh, I guess it's very beautiful indeed. Although I have to admit, I can hardly notice it now after spending hundreds of hours inside this hall. No need to apologize. Hey, who can see all this bewildering beauty and then resist the temptation to read? Except for me, of course. Is it true that there will be a sun eclipse today? Ah, uh, yes, it is. And not only that, the collective gravity force of the sun and the moon will cause something else to happen. A great ebb tide will precede the eclipse by an hour or so. A great ebb tide? How is that different from a regular ebb tide? It's significantly different in magnitude. If my estimations are correct, it will be intense enough to have water completely recede from the western caves. The caves will be without water. Just imagine! Wow! Now that's something I shouldn't miss. How's life after Martin left? Do you still have visitors coming to the library? It's kinda sad. But this library might be the one place least affected by him leaving. Yeah, I know what you mean. The library has never been among the top ten attractions of the island. Did you ever regret leaving your old library to come and work here? Not for a second. I actually like it here. True, perhaps. I met with more people and had more conversations in my old library. But this came at a cost. 
I've always longed to write, but there was no way of doing it back then with all the distractions. This quiet place is exactly what I needed to focus on my writings. I've already had quite a few articles published during the last couple of years. Half of this couldn't have been done in a lifetime had I stayed there. Can I find a scroll for myself in your library? Huh, this doesn't quite sound like you, Joyfus. But yes, I can fetch one for you. Give me one second. Well, turns out this one has some writing in it. That's good. It'll work for me. If you say so. Thanks. Hey, Christina. Guess why I'm here? Hmm. It must be something that isn't about books. One day, Christina. You'll say this to me, and you won't be right. You know what? Maybe you should come and do some seafaring with me one day. Better than this, um, not boring library. Really, Joyfus? And how's that supposed to make a librarian any good? It's not about doing you any good. It's about having fun. Don't you wish you could see for yourself the amazing creatures you've been reading about for years already? Only as much as you're willing to read about them. Wait, really? No, but I don't see myself doing it anytime soon, though. That's it for now. See you around. There are still so many places waiting for me to discover. She won't like it. She keeps dipping her feather every other while. Steel shield and arrows. You shouldn't mess with this, Joyfus. It belongs to the library. I won't be able to take it as long as she's watching. It worked! An empty ink jar. I doubt that I'll ever use it. Christina. Oh, hey, Joyfus. How can I help you? Are these arms authentic? We have something in this library from the Steel Age? You must mean the Iron Age. And no, they're not authentic. They're just here for decoration purposes. Although they really are made of steel. That's it for now. See you around. Very nice of you to give me the scroll. Will it be all right if I asked you to change it with that one over there? Sure, give me just a second. There you go. Thanks. No problem. Oh my, I don't believe it. Is the ink jar empty again? Seems you're writing a lot these days. Not that much, though. I'll have to refill this. I'll be right back. Ah, oh, just in time. Someone's coming already. Halt! Where are you going, pale face? I want to see your chief. I'm ready for the test of truth. Very well. Guards, take the pale face to the archery yard. Go on, pale face, and prove to us that the great ones trust you. Yep, I'm invincible.
Sometimes I begin to suspect that the Great Ones do have a sense of humor. But, after all, the Pale Face made it. Welcome to our sacred village, Pale Face. Hmm. Now when he's around. Martin Scroll! I need to find a way to take it without the Indians noticing me. I wonder why it's empty. It's empty. Excuse me, Chief. What is it, Pale Man? Just in case you forgot or something, the God's Fruit Bowl is empty. This is no Fruit Bowl, Pale Face. Our Great One drinks no water, except for the water coming from heaven. And this bowl is where heaven's water is harvested. But without my great staff of rain, there is no way we can fill the bowl. What is that small thing in the statue's hand? It is our sacred scroll. And you'd better keep your pale hands away from it. But I've passed the test of truth. You should trust me by now. Ha! Ah, touching our sacred scroll will need much more than just that pale face. Like what? I may be able to meet the requirements. You will need a valid ID card, two photos, and a recommendation letter from your town's governor. <laughs> Just kidding. The only requirement is a colored face. And your face ain't colored. What did the scroll say? When the time comes, we will know what the sacred scroll has to tell us. And how's that, Chief? The Awaited One will reveal its sacred contents to our people. Well, in this case, I think I can. And he is no pale face. God bless the sacred scroll. Amen. How did you find it? We didn't. The sacred scroll found us. Is this some sort of joke, Chief? Sons of the Sun never make jokes with a pale face. The Sacred Scroll found us. It came to us, down from the heavens where the Great Ones live. When did it come to you, and how? It must have been nearly two months ago. We were dancing in this very place. One of my men suddenly screamed, looking up at the sky. We were looking around to see what was falling down. There fell the sacred scroll, written by the Great Ones in a language that only the Awaited One could read and understand. Are you sure you didn't see a balloon or something when you looked up? Huh? A balloon? Don't really know what the Pale Face could be talking about. I'll be back later. Sure. Yuck! It must have been since his early childhood when the chief took a bath! You smell so awful! Hello, big fella. Wanna be friends? Hmm. I'll take that as a no. Whether good or bad, whatever's put here will find its way straight to his lungs. A considerable portion of their lifetime is spent on this activity. Okay, okay, all right. Stepping away from your pipe. Nothing happened, nothing to see. Or maybe something did happen. I'll just have to finish my business before you find out. In the name of the Great Ones, what are you doing near our sacred scroll, Pale Face? Nothing, Chief. Look, the scroll is still intact! It had better be. And you'd better keep more distance from our sacred scroll if you wish us to be nice to you. Sure thing, Chief. Who needs an ordinary scroll anyway, when I've got the sacred scroll with Martin's recipe?
let's see. Oh my god! How am I going to read this handwriting? Uh, perhaps the Indian hunters did have a point when they thought it needed an awaited one to read it. Huh. Nothing found. Let's see. Although there is an article about that, I can see nothing of interest. Let's see. Although there... Like it takes John some time to change music, doesn't it? Some time? It's gonna take him ages before he does such a thing. Maybe what he needs is a little push. Mm. Go ahead and give it a try, dude. You may be more luckier than I was. Yeah, yeah, blame your bad luck. I bet your bad taste in music must have been the reason. <laughs> I'm glad you don't like my music, or else I've had doubt of my own taste. But I'm pretty sure that even you won't be able to resist the literally breathtaking Vera Volticana. Vera what? Maybe I should write that down. Ah, don't worry, you don't have to. It's written on a sticky note attached to John's notes above the piano. So why doesn't he play it at least for once if it's so great? From what I gather, he said he didn't have the music notation he needed to play. So he couldn't play it. One day, I'm going to provide him with it, and then after that, he won't have any more excuses. Is it possible you're not done cleaning that glass yet? And what about you? Always walking perfectly, flawlessly either towards right or left, north or south. And what about you always, always turning 45 degrees relative to the said directions while standing still? Well... You see, Joyfest, there are a few things about this world that you're just going to have to accept and move on. That's it for now. All right. This must be the note that William told me about, where he has written down the name of his favorite melody. It's where William has noted down the name of his favorite melody, Vera Vuichikana. Good to see you, Joyfus. I was looking for you. I wanted to ask you about the last scroll I gave you. Seems I gave you a draft that I was still working on by mistake. Um... I don't know how to tell you this, but somehow I lost it. You did? You're a terrible liar, Joyfus. You already used it for something, didn't you? Well, I... Okay, there's no point in hiding it from you. I actually used it to get another scroll worshipped by the Indian hunters. But that scroll... Can I have a look at it, please? The scroll you got from the natives. Why, sure. This is it! And with Martin's signature on it, too! How were you able to get it? 
It's a pretty long story, but I managed to pass their test of truth, and then it finally ended with distracting the guards and replacing the real Martin Scroll with a fake one. The one I got from you. Great. So all I have to do to restore my scroll is just walk through a few tens of practiced warriors and ask them to let me take what they believe to be written especially to them by the hands of the gods. How can that be any easier? Kind of, I guess. Sorry about your scroll, but let's look on the bright side. Your scroll is now being worshipped by the natives. Did you ever receive such a compliment from a journal? Not really, but they've been worshipping a cooking recipe, so... Fine. I can reproduce what was in that scroll. Not the end of the world. And, to be fair, it was me who gave you that. It was my bad, not yours. Although, I'm desperate to know what would make you risk your life for a cooking recipe. Is it really that important? Or can passion for adventures go so far as this? I'd say it's a little of both. That's it for now. See you around. Hey, Christina, guess why I'm here? Hmm, it seems to be something that is about books. Ha! Got you, Christina, because this time... Wait, did you just say that it seemed it was about books? That's what I said. Wow, that was very clever of you, but how did you know? Perhaps because of that piece of paper that you pulled out of your pocket the moment you quizzed me. Oh. What is it about? It's a melody's name, and I need the musical notation of that melody. You'd better read the melody's name yourself, because I'll mess up the pronunciation. No worries. It's very easy to find what you're looking for by yourself. Try checking the music section near the phonograph. The musical notations are arranged in alphabetical order. Got it. Thanks. Okay. All stuff here is alphabetically ordered, so this shouldn't be difficult. One or two minutes and I'm on my way. Let's see. There it is. It will be difficult to take the whole book, so I'll just have to cut out the desired page. Got it! I'm looking for information about a kind of fish called bugga fish. Do you know anything? I think so. If I'm not mistaken, this must be that local species that Martin asked about when he once visited my library. Maybe half a year ago. Great! This will make it easier for you to relocate the sources that Martin used, then. Not exactly. Although Martin did come to the library, he didn't find any reliable sources about the fish. It's clear that the species has never really been researched. Well, I thought it was pretty disappointing, but Martin seemed only excited about the lack of information on Buka fish. Nothing? Not even a peer-reviewed article? Peer-reviewed. Whatever. You should go and speak to William. He worked with Martin for a while and must know about Martin's research more than I do. All right, thanks. What are friends for? Here, John, try this one. Now that's what I call music. Way to go, dude. He's totally detached from our world. Perhaps I need to turn off that Vera thing first before I can talk to him.
Excuse me, Chief. I guess you might know a kind of fish named Booga or Bugga fish? You are talking about the Bugga fish. What's Pale Man's business with the Bugga fish? I want to taste it. I've heard it's delicious. This cannot be. Whoever told you so must be mistaken. Of all the fishes inhabiting this island, this one is especially horrible. It's inedible. Is there a reason for that? Bugga means salt in our language. The tales have it that when the Great Ones distributed food among the fishes of the sea, and the Bugga fish's turn finally came, they were left with nothing but salt as their food. Since then, the Bugga fish have been eating the salt of the sea, and therefore, it was damned to have more salt in its flesh than any other fish in the seas of the world. That shouldn't be a problem to me. I will carefully wash it until it is as fresh as the stream water of your mountain. So where do I find the bugger fish? No way, pale man. Sons of the Sun have already tried every way in the world to clean the fish, but no earthly endeavor could alter the will and damnation of the Great Ones. You never know. The Great Ones might as well have been searching for a better kind of food for the poor creature. And who knows, today might be their lucky day. I've always thought we didn't understand the Pale Man's way of thinking. But since you're determined, go and try your luck. You will find the bugger fish in the Western Caves. I can't catch them with my bare hands. I'll need to find some trick to catch them. Let's see what's going to happen if I fix the net using that rock. There! Now the fish are going to be trapped when it's low tide. Huh. What's this? Really? Isn't this what the chief is looking for? The staff of rain? It must have fallen down here while he was on his hunting trip. I should bring it back to him. It's big, but luckily nothing's too big for my pocket. John, I think that's enough. I'll keep you with your favorite music for now. Ah. Have you heard of a fish called the bug of fish Did you check the cooking encyclopedia? I did, and found nothing there. You won't. That's because the cooking encyclopedia is about edible stuff, which booga isn't. Fishermen have always avoided booga concentrations. Who wants to waste time with an unpopular and unprofitable catch? But for some reason, Martin seemed to develop a keen interest in this kind of fish, especially during his last year. He always used to say, first about the natives and then about us incoming immigrants, that we had been sitting on a gold mine without even having a clue about it. But in order to extract the gold, you would have to pay even more gold. I always wondered what that meant. Well, what I do know is this. Martin always saw something promising about booga fish that we didn't, and he badly wanted to make use of it, but clearly, I don't think he could figure it out. Do you think it would have changed history if it worked? That Martin would have stayed if he figured it out? I never really thought about it that way, but now that you mention it, yeah, I guess it could have. What is it exactly that makes Bugga inedible? It's far more saline than seawater itself, but that taste is just unbearable. And what's wrong with boiling out the salt? That's probably the worst thing you could do. 
booger is so much saline that you need that process to be repeated a few times, changing the boiling water over and over. True, less saline might be there, but this will only come at the expense of its quality. Booga is much too fragile for that intense of a process that if you keep changing the boiling water for a number of times, the fish's flesh would dissolve into something really unpleasant. It's obvious to me that Martin found a way to solve that problem, but for some reason, he was not satisfied with it. That's it for now. All right. Do you happen to know a kind of vegetable called actin? Uh, sure. It's one of the most rare yet desired kind of vegetables out there. I often heard Martin wondering in a sad tone why the best things always have to be the rarest as well. He was always so desperate to find a cheap substitute for this fascinating but rare ingredient. You can look at it as today's alchemy. Many farmers were hoping to make great fortunes by growing it in their farms in wholesale quantities, but none of them ever made it. Even James himself was one of those unfortunate dream victims. You may want to ask him as well for more information about Atkin. That's it for now. Sure. I'm looking for a vegetable called actin. Do you know it? Oh, don't remind me. I wish I'd had never heard of this awful thing before. How come? I've heard it's delicious. Not the taste, but the experience. To start with, the vegetable is so rare that I had to walk my way to the cold mountaintops and search there till I found one. Why did I do that? Because they say it's so freakishly rare and expensive. And I ask myself, why don't I plant some on my own ground and become rich? But that wouldn't do. For three consecutive years I tried to grow it in my field, but in all these times the result was total disappointment. For some reason, Acton now just behaved like its cheap cousin, the Vactin. And no matter for how long you kept it in boiling water, it no longer absorbed salt as it was supposed to do. All my efforts were totally wasted for nothing. What do you want it for? Let's say I need it for my cooking interests. Oh, for some reason I thought you were a sailor or some kind of sea adventurer, but I tend to forget so much these days. Oftentimes appearance can be misleading, you know. So I guess you were gonna tell me which mountaintop it is where you found the Bacton. Uh, yes, sure. Go to the White Peak. You will probably find it there. I'll check it out. Thanks. Whoa, finally. It took forever with that signboard pointing in the wrong direction and... Jesus. What is this? What could a rabbit be doing up here? Nah, it should be safe here until its owner comes to take care of it. Nope, not usable anymore. Not gonna make myself wet and cold for no reason. At least I need something to cover the snow with. It's always snowy up here all year round. This will protect snow from melting for a while. Look at what I found for you, Chief. By the name of O'Hara, my dear staff. I never imagined I'd live long enough to thank a pale man. But you did well, pale man. That was well done. You really deserve what I'm about to give you now. Pale man, I'm passing on to you 
the Golden Fortune statue. Wow, Chief. I can't really believe you're... Wait. That's not... That's not golden. It's made of wood. Wood that brings luck that is better than gold. Don't let the material world deceive you as it did your brethren, Pale Face. You only have to believe, and the Golden Fortune statue will do the rest. Yeah, right. So you're now going to dance to make it rain? The Great Ones will make it rain. All we can do is show our humble need by exhibiting the sacred dance. It always takes time to convince the Great Ones of our need. Looks like it's going to be a while before it rains. I'd rather see to my own business until then. Perhaps I should get back to gathering the remaining contents of the recipe. Hello, Joseph. Hello, Joyfus. How are you doing? Let me tell you this story. The Indian chief lost his staff and promised to give whoever found it his golden fortune statue. I found the staff, and look what I got. Oh my god! Yeah, you see, that's what he calls golden. Golden fortune, he says. Who cares? Well, it seems then that our friend was right. This valuable piece will, will earn you a small fortune. Wait, what? Yes, it's been a few months since I came across such a beautiful piece of local art. Let me get to the bottom of this quickly. I'm willing to buy this from you for one golden pound, which is a very fair price for such a piece. What do you say? You know, Joseph, I'm beginning to like your strange hobby of collecting creepy handicrafts. Let's finish this quickly before you change your mind. All right, I'm rich! Not rich enough to get to Kanta, though. I guess that's about it for now. You take care, my friend. A bottle with a scroll inside it. I need a corkscrew to open it. Ugh, fish! There, this should preserve my fish fresh and good. Why would I go there? The lighthouse. It's off these days. Not today. John, how about you give some good time to our good friend William?
The lighthouse. It's off these days. By the name of Atasha, he is here by himself. What? Brothers, come quick. The bad pale man is here. Come and arrest the bad pale face before he runs away. Well, well. Here comes our grand thief and big cobra. Good lord. What's come over you, chief? What's the meaning of all this? We don't like pale faces when they play innocent. We actually don't like pale faces at all times. You did a very good job for a pale face. But you can't mess with Sons of the Sun. No one can. Now tell us, pale face, where did you hide our precious sacred scroll? What? They found out about me. But how? That pale face will stay with us and won't go anywhere until our real sacred scroll has been safely returned to the hand of our master. Man, time is running out. I've seriously got more important issues to handle right now than a full sunny eclipse that is going to happen today. Oh my god! I got it! Enough of it, Chief! You either let me free this very moment, or... Ha! <laughs> or what, man of the pale skin? Either this, or I will summon the powers of darkness to forever suck the light of your sun and leave you in eternal darkness. <laughs> Are all jokes of your people as bad as that one man of the pale face? A joke, you say? Well then, better see than hear. Eshrithorama, Beyushota! Oh, the powers of darkness! Let the sun be hidden and its light be gone! Oh, powers of darkness! Take the light of the sun! Take the light of the sun! Ashrathorama Beashoda! In heaven's name, what is happening? How, how could you do this? It doesn't matter how I could do that as much as what will happen to you if you fail to obey the wishes of your great ones and listen to what I have to say. That's madness. No man of pale face can ever tell sons of sun how to. I said shut up and listen. First of all, you will keep your stupid spears away from me. Then I will consider forgiving you. I see that's already been taken care of. Next, you will never again call me anything but Son of the Great Ones. You will also forever forget about that scroll thing. I've been sent by the Great Ones with the gift of a newer edition of the Great Testament, so you'd better accept it with thanks for your own sake. And one more thing, Chief. I'm sorry to tell you that I've heard a very disappointing report from the Great Ones about you. For now on, you will take baths on a daily basis, unless you want the Great Ones to be very angry with you. It's okay. Now that's more like it. I thought your guards wouldn't mind me taking some water from the bowl. I found it in the Indian's village after getting away. Since it isn't likely to belong to the Indians themselves, it must have been dropped by my mysterious enemy, whoever he or she is. You don't really think this is a kind of food, do you? <laughs> Just kidding. Let's see what the cooking encyclopedia has to say about this. Well, that's an interesting story right there.
Thanks, John. I think that's enough. I'll keep you with your favorite music for now. Ah. William, what can you tell me about this? Tins noodles. Is it yours? No, I found it dropped on the ground. Do you know where I can find more? You probably can. Tins noodles were so popular and the demand was so huge. The last shipment of this item was fully consumed a few weeks ago. Yet, you can try asking in the dock for more information because that's where the merchant received the items that come in on shipments. Have you seen this before? Of course I have. Every now and then I ship a few boxes of this from Cantor Island. So where do I find it? I doubt you will. The last shipment was a while ago and it's so goddamn popular that the people finished it off. Imagine this. One of them approached me directly arguing he was buying in wholesale quantities. Really? Who was that person? The lighthouse keeper. He alone purchased nearly one quarter of my last shipment. I was told he stored this long-life food in his attic in the lighthouse to easily prepare food while on duty. There we go! I have no time to play around with stuff. I have no time to play around with stuff. What the? Hey, Joyfus, need a ride? Seems like your boat has suddenly gone out of service. Simon, so it was you all this time. I don't get it. Why did you have to bring me here if you'd planned to force me to stay in the Indian's village? Because you ruined my plan by turning the Eclipse to your advantage. And I have to admit that I was impressed. That was very intelligent coming from you. But to say that I brought you here is a bit of an overstatement. It was rather you who kept investigating after I carelessly dropped a small piece of paper on the ground. You just don't know when to quit, and I only did what was necessary to welcome you properly when you came to visit. Oh, I see now. So that rabbit on the mountaintop was your doing, and the fake signboard in the jungle too. Oh yeah, thanks a lot for the free information near the barn, Joyfus. Turning that old signboard to point in the wrong direction gave me all the time I needed to implement my little plan. Then the rabbit would take care of the rest. <laughs> I really laughed so hard when I imagined the look on your face the moment your eyes set on my rabbit doing its business. <laughs> so you intend to win with grilled cowtails, don't you? Not bad. I know. Wasn't it obvious who took those tails from poor James into a simpleton like you? It's cowtail soup, Joyfus. One of the most popular dishes nowadays. Nothing but an original Martin could stand in my way. Now that that's been taken care of, it's only a matter of time before I hold that first place cooking prize in my hands. Which isn't a bad way to pay back your debt. I never owed you anything, Simon, and never will. Oh yeah? What about the rain staff then? I still don't know how you found it, but didn't you wonder why it was there? Tell me, what would the rain staff be doing on the White Peak when the natives never set foot up there? I have no idea what you're talking about. The staff of rain was in the caves. So that's how it happened. It fell down there. I spent all that time searching for it in the wrong place. Don't tell me you're somehow involved in the story of the staff too. Very perceptive of you, Joyfus. But I'm not going to disappoint you. That's exactly how it is. A few months back, I happened to be exploring the western jungles beneath the White Peak when, guess who I ran into? The native Indian hunters. I saw them, but they didn't see me. Their chief was carrying his rain staff and holding it close to his chest. 
I kept following them for a while, until their attention was totally fixed on a catch in the jungles. I didn't know the fate of the poor beast because something else caught my notice, the chief's staff. He dropped it when the tribe went to hunt down their prey, and I had all the time in the world to run with it. I still don't see how that explains why the staff should be left on the White Peak. Now is when we get to that. The reason is that I couldn't take the risk of carrying that valuable item all the way back to the town and then keeping it at home with me. I had to leave it in a nearby place, one that was safe from the natives themselves, and what place was better than White Peak? It's very close to the western jungles, in the opposite direction of the natives' trail and in a spot they will never think of. And it's very easy to find the staff whenever I want it back. Or so I thought, at least. But somehow, it found its way to the caves beneath the White Peak, where you found it. I've never been able to comprehend your interest in making others miserable by taking away their valuable stuff. That's because you're getting the wrong end of the stick. What stick are you talking about? It's a metaphor, you idiot. Let me rephrase that in a language you can understand. You're looking at it from the wrong perspective. It's not about upsetting others. It's about changing their misery into happiness, as you call yourself a hero and take all the credit. But it just so happened that I only risked everything when you alone reaped all the benefits. I have to correct that mistake. Apparently you forgot to check the cabinets in the Keeper's Attic before you trapped me here. Luckily you won't have me killed with all the food in my hands. Kill you? Who said I wanted to kill you? No, Joyfus. I want you to live as long as you can to witness your own defeat over and over. A dead rival is no rival. Now, if you'll excuse me, Joyfus, I really want to help, but I have no time to waste. I've got a best cook first prize waiting for me. Ciao. supposed to do with it there is much coal inside in good condition some coal might be useful that won't work the stove now has fuel in it A small flame is lit. I doubt it'll last long. It worked! Now we have fire. Wait for it. Wait for it. There! I made it! I finally managed to make sticky noodles. It worked! Time to catch my ship before it's too late. But this cannot be. Is that ship? Oh no! One of the ships seems to be moving already! I must be too late. No, no, no! This is not happening! Not after all I went through! Why did you have to leave so early? Why?! Seems you're going through hard, emotional times. Huh? You're... you're still here? Of course I'm here. Where else would I be? <laughs> well, apparently I was looking at the wrong ship. Seems like I'm going to go to Kanta Island after all. Nothing can ruin my day now. What's that noise coming from the restaurant? I once won a fight. One versus five.
I was with the five, though. <laughs> that was one of the best jokes I've ever heard. <laughs> no way, no way!